What's up guys, it's BGFX. I'm coming back at y'all with another brand new video, man. As usual, if you do get some value, make sure to hit the like button on this video as well as hit the subscribe button down below. And if you have any questions, as usual, comment them down below, drop some feedback, it'd be much appreciated. So we just hit 2K subs. Thank you to all y'all, man. Whoever's showing love on the channel, whether you're liking it, commenting it, or just spending time just to check out the videos, man. I appreciate all y'all. So let's go ahead and get into the video. I'm going to be walking y'all through a trade that we took here on USD CAD. Um, this previous week that just passed is currently Friday right now. It is 3.09 p.m. Markets are going to close in about 50 minutes, but I'm done for the week, man. I took one trade this week, right? I took one trade. And something I really want to say, man, is like, nothing's wrong with only taking one trade you know especially if you take that trade it met your rules you followed your plan and you step away from the markets and profits there's nothing wrong with being finished with for the week so for me personally this was a one to eight risk to reward trade setup I actually called it as a signal um i'll go ahead and throw a before and after picture up on the screen right now and uh overall you know like i said it was a very good week super profitable week it was about 15 percent on one trade while only risking two percent so you don't need to really be risking a crazy amount on your trades you just need to really mask it master risk to reward you know assessing your risk for what you possibly could get back with it um i feel like a lot of people look at pips in terms of profitability and to me pips pips are good you know they can definitely they can definitely mean that you're you're making progress but overall profitability percentages don't lie all right this week is around 14 15 percent um so you know walked away with the with a hell of a good week so i'm definitely okay with only taking one trade sometimes you got to stick to your plan you can't let this media mess with you that's the main thing i've had a lot of questions recently people asking me like is it a bad thing if you only enter one two a week and my answer is always no it's not a bad thing at all the only the only bad thing is if you don't stick to your plan you know the only bad thing is if you if you over leverage if you risk too much if you're breaking your rules that's what's bad there's nothing wrong with following your plan if your plan only shows you one trade and you take that trade and you finish for the week then you're good right you're good so uh yeah man um had a withdraw the week before last we made a withdraw of prosperity fx i'll throw a little video a little clip up of that as well man but let's go ahead and get into this video so this is usd cad um right here we have a one to four point three hra set up now however i actually did hold this um up into these highs right here so let's go ahead and clear everything off the screen real quick man and i'm gonna go ahead and get into the trade set setup so let's go ahead and bring this back to here and we will also go up to the four hour time frame right so looking at the four hour time frame you can see that around september 24th right we made these highs and since we made these highs in the markets right we were kind of respecting that level as a potential area of resistance so once we kind of rejected we made a little pullback we pushed all the way below the structure so if you look left from where we are now right you can draw this little mini zone out right you can draw this little mini zone you can see that price is kind of like a break and retest situation and if you guys watch my previous videos you know that i like to talk a lot about liquidity um going against the retail herd not in every situation but just kind of assessing your probabilities so you can get on the right side of markets um so right here you can see that we were trading below that little area uh, below that little zone now something I want to keep in mind right is the US dollar right week before last the, the entire week US dollar was very weak we dropped off now the reason of this is because we had Trump versus the Federal Reserve right the Federal Reserve wants to push more capital into the economy they want to print more money to make our economy look better right Trump said look we don't need to do that I think we could get back you know on our own I think we're, we're strong enough as a nation to bounce back without having to print trillions and trillions of dollars uh, and it was kind of like a back and forth thing there, Trump versus the Federal Reserve. Plus, we had a lot of things with the presidential presidential debates. We have um, the election coming up, which is kind of like rising tension. So there's a lot of stuff for the U.S. dollar, man. And it was real good to kind of keep an eye on that. And you can see that we pushed down a fair amount here on USD CAD. Now, obviously, looking at a pair like USD CAD, if the U.S. dollar is weak, it's going to go down relative to the standpoint of the Canadian dollar. So we pushed down a good bit, right? We began to trade below the zone. Now, what I notice is I noticed a couple patterns and I did start to feel like we were going to have a pullback on the DXY you know we begin to gain some more strength on that US dollar and we were going to potentially bounce back so this is on a four hour time frame but if I work my way down to the hourly right you can see that we kind of dip 
um, above this area structure we kind of push above that um, we were respecting it for a little bit until we kind of make those new highs right so if we look right here you can see we had four uh, four solid rejections and we also made new lows relative to this previous area so something I like to do right is if price is rejecting that price is rejecting a form of resistance and it makes new lows what I'll do is I'll keep in mind, right, that there's going to be a lot of liquidity sitting above the zone. Very simple, very simple. So what we could do right here, I'll put that right there and I'll go down to the 15 minute time frame. And you can see that for the most part, a lot of people are going to be selling. So when they're selling, we know one thing that above this level, we are going to have retail, you know, exits where people are looking to get out their stop losses. So potentially if the U.S. dollar does bounce back it will usually target above this level where most liquidity is residing at right it only makes sense that if the market reverses it's going to push up into that area so what we have here right is our first draw i first drew out this little area structure and i'll go ahead and clear this off real quick i drew out this little area structure here and i see now we broke those lows that caught my attention and i seen that we had a solid reversal pattern right one of the uh one of the main reversal patterns I like to use. So we had a W formation right here into a purge of a new low before coming into structure. So what I did was I took Fibonacci, right? Very simple. I took Fibonacci from here to here. And I then drew out my 618 retracement. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are uh, very familiar with Fibonacci. If you're new to the channel, basically the 618, um, when you draw a swing low to swing high, 618 is usually going to be like one of your most powerful powerful numbers to look at one of your most powerful percentages golden ratio but uh yeah we pushed down to this level right and keep in mind we didn't really touch the level yet you know we were very close to it um but around this time right what i started to do is i want to kind of keep an eye on this pair and we could also see that the market was in this little phase here so potentially what i was going to want to see if we go ahead and come right here was something like this happen before we break into new highs on a pair. Now my potential exit, the first exit was gonna be the 618. All right, keep in mind, first exit was gonna be the 618. Um, and that would have been for us around 60 or so pips. So keep that in mind, that was gonna be my first targets, right? Above this level, it can also line up with this previous little pullback of price before we ended up pushing to the downside. So aside from that, okay, I drew this trend line out and I knew that once price kind of traded above this zone, we were going to have limit orders, right? We were going to have a lot of limit orders, sell limits. Most retail traders looking to sell into the downward trend. So since there were limit orders there, my point of view was that price could potentially push up into that zone and grab those limits. Now, price can do two things from there because we know, we know, you know, the way retailers think. We're retailers as well, but we know the way they think. And we know that if price comes up to here, excuse me, we know if price comes up to here, it will either bounce off or it'll come back above these highs. So for me, I wanted to hold up into this zone. If it began to reject, I was going to close. Okay, if it began to push up, you could have held a little bit longer, right? So from that point, we had the formation. And what I wanted to do, right, was I wanted to go ahead and grab this. And I'm going to give you all a little cheat code here something that'll probably blow your mind real quick go ahead and hit this and bring it up to the high and what this did was it took the pattern from the candlesticks so the candlesticks october 20th i'm, I'm sorry october 20 october 13 2020 at four okay i don't know if this is pm or am i honestly forgot but uh yeah so what you want to do is you took what i did was i took this and i went to mirrored and i went to flipped and what i did was i dropped it right about here and that was the the um the price action that i wanted to see occur right pushing above this high taking out that liquidity and potentially targeting this area here so the way most people are thinking right and i want y'all to understand this is that the way most people are thinking when we hit this zone they aren't looking to buy okay they aren't looking to buy and that's what 90 percent of people aren't willing to do and sometimes you got to take that risk you got to assess it and understand that a lot of these traders trade the same way and i'm not saying nothing's wrong with it at all it's not what i'm saying it's just all about finding what works for you and i'm gonna be honest it's very powerful if you if you get good at the method you take it seriously you know you build that intuition you start to understand these patterns more you start to understand where liquidity is at potential areas of target so instead of us entering with the 90 percent we are targeting where the 90 percent are looking to enter 
You see what I mean? And then we also had that fundamental bias that the U.S. dollar was going to bounce back. We had the um, the technicals playing out, 618 retracement. We had liquidity sitting above the zone. And to me, looked like a, a fairly decent opportunity, guys. So, uh, yeah, that's what I want to see happen. So I went ahead and I put a long position right here on the 618. And did I use long or short just now? Let's see. Okay, that was long. Look, I changed the colors of it. But um, yeah, so that was gonna be that. And I'm gonna have to go over here to the um Telegram channel really quick. I have to go over here to the Telegram channel to see the exact entry for y'all. But um, here it is. So this was the signal. Buying USD CAD now, entry at 31190. Uh, and I'll go ahead and plot that, that out in a second for y'all. And then stop loss was 3104. So if we come over here, uh, 31190. Zero, and then we could just say come back over here to that stop loss is 3104 and then 3172 so we'll come down here 3104 it didn't take profit up here at 3172 but we'll just round that off to the 618 so that's kind of what things were looking like so the overall projection with the way you want to see price move was this little um pattern right we flipped it around we mirrored it and we want to target that and then finally target area uh target the area up there and target those orders so this is very simple um the little pattern thing you can go to bar pattern you can flip it around now this is the basics of it okay i plan on doing a lot more with it i'm working on some stuff to the course right now adding it up there and this is the real this is the real deal you know if you start to understand you know by um going ahead and do something like this bars pattern and then you flip it Okay, flip it and you can use it as a potential uh, way of kind of predicting price action. So I'm not going to talk too much. So let's go ahead and press play. And uh, you can see that we begin to move very nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that back. And that was a very, very clean entry. Right, super clean entry. And I'll go ahead and let this play out a little bit more. So if we go ahead and we look at this, you can see that the price action was very, very similar. I want you guys to look at the way price pushed up. Pushed down, pushed up a second time, it consolidated, made new highs, it pulled back, then it took off, and it even followed through with the same exact price action up here. So I want y'all to realize, you didn't have to even see this happen yet. What we did was we took previous price action right around the area that was sitting under liquidity, and we patterned it, we flipped it over, we mirrored it, and that is what I was looking to see happen. So sometimes you can do that, you know, just a little extra tip for y'all. Sometimes you can do that. Um, I'll try to make a video more detailed about it in the future, but right, that was the first target hit. And if we go ahead and we come over here, scroll down, um, as you guys can see, buying USD CAD right there. We actually took this trade around three, four in the morning. Um, I live in Louisiana, so that was pretty, pretty early. But uh, as you guys can see, we pushed up, pushed up very nice stops roll to break even, trade risk free running in profits. Um, continue to move up, you know what I mean? Continue to move up. Uh, stack the second position now. Let me go ahead and show you guys when I actually decided to add that second position So we pushed up right we pushed up and I'll go ahead and measure it We moved up around 30 pips right give or take and we came down for this pullback So what I actually did was I drew out this zone here so the zone here And I went ahead and I stacked another order and overall I had around 1% around this first entry and a second percent around this second entry so by putting both these positions in you could say that was a little bit less than a two percent risk um not less than two percent but a little bit um in terms of your risk to reward it's going to be a little bit less since i entered a little bit higher with the long see what i mean but uh yeah so there was two two orders sitting right here we pushed up at 58 pips we hit our take profit with only 15 pips of risk so i want you guys to or let me just say it this way, right? Every strategy is going to have an edge. Every single strategy. You need to know your edge. My edge is that I usually have very tight stop losses. You know, I have people message me, tell me my stop loss looks just non-existent sometimes. And understanding your edge inside and out and following it to a T is how you get profitable, right? The, the profitability doesn't really come in each individual trade that you take based off of how good or accurate it is accurate it is the profitability is usually coming from you managing your risk you managing trades moving stops to break even letting winners run cutting losers short that's usually where the profitability comes in and the profitability comes from doing all those things consistently right you can't just risk two percent on one trade and then the next trade risk five percent because then what that does is that brings in inconsistency 
you know you want that consistent growth when we talk about compounding we talk about that slow movement to the upside over the long term that's something i preach to my students is that we're trading we got to understand the ups and the downs we got to look at it for the long term we can't be looking to get rich get rich overnight you know what i mean stick to the plan and you'll find setups like this right you'll find these winners and you'll realize that you don't need that many of these winners to make a lot of money okay especially over the long term you just want consistent percentages consistent percentages percentage over pips okay pips are good now nah, but percentages over pips so that's what we had going on here um stack that second position up and then you guys can see that the position just continued to run and pushed all the way above this trend line trend line so when we ask ourselves why did price push above this trend line what do you think was right here retail sellers looking to push price back to the downside right so that's going to be that sell side right that's going to be that liquidity up there and what we actually did here was i targeted um somewhere around here i believe we were around 125 pips total or actually 140 pips total i'll close around 120 so for me this was a one to seven i know i believe i closed for a one to eight yeah i'll throw a screenshot of the exact amount but um yeah so i closed for a one to eight so if you were risking two percent you could have got around 16 percent back and if you could find three to four solid trades per month low drawdown you know projecting the the future with a strong movement building a good enough bias you don't have to win every trade you can take one two three trades a week you can take a five ten trades a month you could be extremely profitable right so that's what we had going on there and uh we pushed above those highs so that was going to be the first trade um and i'll go ahead and scroll scroll down our uh, usd cad running new highs had our second position in secure some profits let the rest continue to run at break even uh usd cad hit take profits for 52 pips one to three point four seven are, are secured for anyone holding usd cad is flying at 120 pips for a one to eight rr so overall very clean man i'll go ahead and show you all what happened before um so this is the only trade that was actually executed this week right we had um gold i was looking at right so this is gonna be the gold outlook um had a little bit of this little pattern trading up here while these highs were still being maintained so what i want to see is once the new session actually opened up i want to see those highs made and then drop off into london and new york session for about 100 pips and my final targets were 1882.767 right so about 100 pips and if we scroll down right um targets will hit perfectly 100 pip drop didn't get the entry confirmation uh needed but uh, this was kind of the outlook as the week progressed. We've seen gold sell off plus USD pairs begin to pick up some strength as expected. Most USD pairs are in the process of pulling back. If the US gives us the rebound we've been looking for, it will cause gold to lose some value. Okay, this is more of a fundamental outlook. I'll be looking to sell gold down to 1882.769 with the right confirmation. Uh, and this is what happened before, right? Also had Euro JPY sell limits this week um, placed around here. And this was actually a one to five RR. So as you guys can see, uh, my my particular style is focusing on very low drawdown, very large reward. But you got to understand what comes with it. You know, sometimes you might get stopped out. Sometimes, um, you know, you just got to let the winners run. Very, very large reward. Uh, but there's, there's ups and downs to every strategy. So this is mine, right? This is my outlook here on your JPY. Um, and yeah, ended up pushing, tanking right up the dump. So we didn't get that push up into our limit. So we canceled the limit, looked at gold. Gold played out to the T perfectly at 1882.767. And then uh, we had USD CAD, which played out as well. So that's pretty much it for the VIP. Uh, here's one thing, one other trade setup that I wanted to go through. Uh, which is pretty similar to USD CAD. So um, the reason I want to talk about this, I think I can get a real good point across. Even though I didn't take this trade, I believe this occurred the week before last. Had my eye on it, but um, let's go ahead and get into it, right? So NZD CHF on the 30-minute time frame, right? Price is trending to the downside. We see this high made, right? We see this high made right here. And we see consistent, not high, we see lower lows being made. Our first initial high was up here, and then we made that lower, low, lower, low. And then it was kind of consistent from there. So we see this level, and then we push down into a new low, and we push down into a new low. So what do we think most people are going to be doing if we draw this trend line from here to here? Right? A lot of selling going on, a lot of retail selling going on. So we need to know that price ends up pushing up about 42 uh, pushing down about 42 pips from that rejection so if we go ahead and we draw this out here and we also zoom back a little bit I'm gonna draw this little area out and this is a pattern that happens a lot 
okay this is a pattern that happens a lot in the markets what you'll see is the market begins to build up some form of structure right so you see how we we uh, I'm gonna have to go up to my higher time frame for this but you see how we begin to kind of trade around here then we begin to reject we kind of start to build up a mini form of structure and we wick or we really push down to the downside and when you look in the past it'll be a very small level that been there the whole time right and then we push below that level and then once we come back up we kind of get this double top here right this little double top um, where a lot of people were looking to sell right a lot of people looking to sell right there so we're gonna have some liquidity sitting above that so once again we aren't looking to sell with the trend line we aren't looking to kind of let price do its thing and then sell once it comes up here what I'm usually looking for is I'm, I'm assessing the fact that a lot of people want to sell there and I'm looking for the confirmation to get into it so for the most part I wouldn't buy at this pullback now let me tell you why most people are selling they can be right right just because the retail herd as a whole um, is selling doesn't mean they're wrong okay they, they could profit based off of the most simplest stuff as well sometimes uh, so it's good to know right so I would have entered right here and I would have been targeting the liquidity above here and then from that point I'm making my trade risk free so even if it does bounce off of the trend line I'm okay right my risk is taken out of the markets my capital is no longer exposed so if you look right here we're targeting where most orders where most limits where most liquidity is residing at so not only will we have that liquidity up there we're gonna have it somewhere around here above this trend line right for people selling if you look up pushed up nearly almost exactly 40 pips right and it makes sense that a good bit of people would have 40 30 40 pip stop loss so that liquidity is taken out um so what you want to see here man is when you're closing your position is when you're when you're targeting above those highs you're grabbing that liquidity from most people that are selling so what i would do here is once this double top was formed yeah once the double top was formed i would look at my previous zone and I don't really have enough time to explain the concept of the, the entire theory that I work with in the course in this YouTube video. But I like to see structure, a decent structure coming into a previous zone like this, faking us out and then coming back up into the zone, giving us a double top. And see, we actually push up kind of near that area. So from that, you can take fair retracement, right? You can take fair retracement, as you guys can see, once again, down to the 618 pushing us up and then we pull back and then we hit the trend line right so what are we doing once it hits the trend line and begins to reject we are now moving stops to break even right moving stops to break even we no longer need to have our capital um exposed to the market right you can honestly move stops to break even once it begins to trade above this little zone here and then you're targeting that area up there and if you wanted to hold on to it that would be like a 80 85 pip reward and that was very low risk to very low reward very large reward so what i'm saying here is that you don't want to go like completely opposite you know for most retail traders you're just changing your perception from look i'm gonna enter when everyone else is entering into i'm gonna target where everyone else is entering that's how you target liquidity right so just a little tip for the video um hope y'all enjoy man that's pretty much what we have for this week like I said, we're looking at Euro JPY, gold, and then USD CAD. We took that final trade on USD CAD, um, about 15% for the week and only one trade. So you don't need a crazy amount of trades. You just need to build up the confluence, understand the direction of the market, why it moves the way it does. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. It's been your boy BJFX. Let's see if we can hit 125 likes on this video. That's pretty much it, man. I hope y'all enjoyed. I'm out. Salute. Black soul.